Welcome to this lesson on a quick and dirty way to get some chromaticism into your rock playing. Of course, brought to you by Elixir Strings. What is chromaticism, I hear you asking? Well, it sounds a bit like this. Now hopefully you'll excuse the barrage of notes that we had going on there. That was really just to illustrate the point that we're about to get to. Now, chromaticism in a nutshell. We're gonna dumb this down for rock players like myself out there. So if you are an experienced jazz or fusion nut, stick around, there's still gonna be some cool tips for you in here, but this is mainly aimed for people who are kind of new to this idea. Chromaticism is essentially the idea that you can, at least in theory, use any of the 12 chromatic notes i.e. any of the 12 frets from E to its octave here on E, or from any note to its relevant octave, you can use any of them in just about any key, provided you're willing to tolerate a certain amount of musical dissonance, but that can be a good thing. So let's talk a little bit deeper about what we have going on here. We're gonna be in the key of C, and I'm gonna be using my C minor pentatonic for the most part. Now we're gonna stick in box number one, and just so we're clear on our terms, that's the one that's gonna read something like this. We're gonna begin on the low E string with frets eight and 11. <laughs> Then we'll have 8 and 10 on the next three strings, 8, 10, 8, 10, 8, 10, and then finally 8 and 11 on the high two strings. We're also going to allow ourselves access to the notes from our Dorian scale because our backing track is kind of implying a Dorian tonality. In this case, the important ones are going to be on fret number 10 on the E string, fret 10 on the B string, and also fret 7 on the G string and on the D string. So all told from high to low, we're going to get something resembling this, 11, 10, 8. Same again, 11, 10, 8. And then 10, 8, 7. Same again, 10, 8, 7. And then we can just finish our pentatonic scale like so for the sake of brevity. Now, the quick and dirty way that I'm gonna show you to fill in some chromatic notes is literally by filling in the gaps in either a three or four fret uh, kind of space, if you wanna call it that. Now let's talk, first of all, about three fret spaces. What I mean by that, in this instance, if we take, for argument's sake, the notes on our G string, and we were to play fret number eight and fret number 10, I'm gonna consider that a three fret space because we have one fret, another fret, and yet another one. And it also uses three fingers. That's why I'm using the term three in this case. Now, we can throw in this missing middle finger note with relative impunity against our backing track as long as we use it to transition from one scale note to another. This is a concept that's sometimes referred to as passing tones, which is something you may have heard of before. But as far as we're concerned, we can literally just use it to fill the gap between this note and this note. And this is how I want you to think about this stuff just to begin with, is just filling space. Let's throw the backing track on right now. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna explore filling in the three fret spaces on the A string, the D string and the G string, which would give us something from this that turns into something like this, which is something I'm sure you've all done probably by accident or you've heard guitar players done it and you've kind of, you know, maybe you tried to recreate it in your own playing. Let's have a listen against the backing track and then we'll take it a step further.
Now, the actual sequences that you play here are fairly irrelevant. It doesn't really matter. It's all down to your musical tastes and what feels comfortable under your fingers. Of course, you can develop more of these as you go on through some concentrated practice. Now, let's explore in the same position some four fret spaces. Now, we did establish that we were going to allow ourselves these Dorian notes on the seventh fret on the G string and also on the D string. Now, what this gives us is essentially a four fret space which is between fret number seven and fret number ten and it includes this fret number eight note which we've established is in our scale already so if we had the scale notes as this this now means we can fill in our four space chromatic notes like this and hopefully you agree like the previous three space example it still sounds in if perhaps a little bit more jazzy let's say so let's explore exactly the same idea but this time we're going to throw the backing track on and we're going to play using these four space patterns now again don't worry if i'm playing stuff that's a little fast for you to decode the point of this lesson is not to show you exactly which notes to play it's more to explore the principle behind including chromaticism in your playing so let's try it now So now we've worked out that anytime we have a three or four fret space, we can fill in some chromatic notes. We can go looking for some more. So let's go and find some three fret spaces within our minor pentatonic, including these Dorian notes. So let's talk about the bottom string, the lower E string. Well, first of all, we could theoretically include this Dorian note here, which gives us a three fret spacing like this, which we could play as. Of course, there is a naturally occurring one right here on our A string. You might think about this as the notes from the blues scale. We've got one here on the D string. One here also on the G string. And if we include these 10th fret Dorian notes, that gives us three fret spacings right here on our E string and also on our B string. So really we've got one on pretty much every eighth fret first finger note. We can play a three fret spacing. Now you wouldn't play it straight up and down like this. Although it actually sounds pretty cool, but it's more a case of just kind of interspersing it in amongst your playing. That's another question for another day though, as to when to use this. And I'm gonna leave that to your ears to work this out. Now, let's find some four fret spacing. So we established that there's one here on the D string. We also have one here on the G string. And we know from playing our minor pentatonic scale, that we have four fret spacings on the E string and also on the B string that are just rife for being filled in. However, there are actually a few more. If we include the flat five note from our blues scale, we actually get this one right here starting on fret seven. Now you do have to be a little more careful with that one because the outside two notes aren't both scale tones. This one here, for example, isn't. So if you spend too much time on that, there's a low C note. It can sound a little bit disastrous, but it is a really cool way of passing from, for example, this note to these notes down here. So you might get this. So there's a whole bunch of places where you can play these chromatic passing tones, and this is just within the confines of the first position of our minor pentatonic with the addition of some Dorian notes. Now, this isn't exclusive to Dorian. You can use this in just about any tonality. It's really good in blues, for example. It's a really nice way to fill things in. Uh, you can use it in, well, you name it, you can play it. So one more time, we're going to go to the backing track, and we're going to explore kind of a unified approach using all of these spacings and I'll try and make it as clear as possible 
Please bear with me though, because I am going to be playing a lot of notes very quickly. The point with this is not for you to keep track of the individual notes and try and play exactly the same licks that I'm playing, because they're not really licks. I'm just kind of flowing with it. And this is something that you should strive for in your own playing. Rather, it's about you kind of getting to grips with this concept and then figuring out how to incorporate it into your own playing through your own practice. So one more time, let's throw the backing track on. Keep your eyes peeled. See if you can spot when I'm playing three note patterns and four note patterns. And we'll hear how it sounds. This has been a lesson on incorporating chromaticism into your rock lead playing, brought to you by Elixir Strings, and I will see you next time.